Hello and welcome. I am value brand Tyler Edlin. My name is Tyler Bourne. I've worked with Tyler Edlin on several client projects, including Epic Games and Blizzard. Today, we're going to look at breaking things down into simple shapes so that we can better understand them, more easily turn them in three-dimensional space, and more easily commit them to memory, which in turn will help us when designing our own pieces. Intermixed with all of that, we're also going to look at additive and subtractive design, basically adding some of these simple shapes together and subtracting one from the other in order to build out our forms. So there are five simple shapes, the cube, the cylinder, the sphere, the cone, and the pyramid. And these simple shapes make up absolutely everything. Now, I know you might be saying to yourself, actually, atoms and molecules make up everything. But no, that's wrong. These shapes make up everything. So my old dynamic sketching instructor, Peter Hahn, used to quote his old instructor, Norm Sherman. And Norm used to say that a tank is just a shoebox with a birthday cake on top with a carrot shoved into it. And it's not wrong. Essentially, what he meant was... It's just a cube with a cylinder on top with another cylinder coming out of the cylinder. So that's what we want to do is break things down into very simple shapes so that we can better understand them. You'll notice that we leave out a lot of the smaller details. We break it down as simply as we can. And that's because you're never going to remember all the small details of a tank, but you can remember the simple archetype of three shapes. So you'll be able to remember that more easily, and you'll also be able to turn it in three-dimensional space in your mind more easily, which means that you can draw it from any angle. So we can do the same idea with architecture. Here we've got some uh, pretty basic rounded forms. So this little area here is basically just a sphere combined with a cylinder. Um, so a lot of the times these shapes aren't necessarily just one and then the other, they're sort of combinations of them. So these two towers are essentially both spheres sitting on top of cylinders. And then we've got some really flattened cylinders for this, the sort of balcony roof type areas. And then here, what we've got is we start seeing a subtractive form. So this is a cut away. We essentially have sort of a cube shaped object cutting into that cylinder. So if we draw through here, we can see that you'd get sort of a half circle cut out of the cylinder. We can also look at the same thing in 3D. So if you do know a bit of 3D, it'll probably help with this idea of additive and subtractive form, because that's basically exactly what you do in 3D. You're building things with these simple shapes in either an additive way or a subtractive way, and typically it's a combination of the two. So as I'm sketching these, that's basically what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking these things are essentially just two cylinders. There's a bit of a spheroid shape on top of the cylinders, and then those couple of cutaways. So most of this is additive. I'm adding these shapes to one another. There's not much subtractive shape going on, mostly just the windows and the doors. Those are almost always gonna be cutaways, but we'll take a look at some other versions of subtractive design. So I believe this is some form of radar. Um, it makes me think of the macro binoculars from Star Wars, but uh, so we'll take a look. So essentially this one is pretty easy. It's just one big uh, cube or rectangular cube, but we can look at different ways of how to add to the form and then also subtract. So in this example, I'm going to work with a couple different colors. So when I'm working in blue, that's going to be an additive example and then red is going to be subtractive so you can see here it starts off with the cube and then we're lopping off some of the corners we cut out the central area there and then it gets additive when we add on the little screen protector Then we also add on that section on the left hand side and then i'm adding a section here where there's sort of that ridge section on the right hand side of it but because that is sort of a tapered trapezoid type section i first built it out as a rectangle and then i shaved off the corners of that as well and here we've got that dial so there's a subtraction happening there and then we can add back in the cylinder for the dial itself so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is we could do the entire thing as one big 
rectangle. So last time we added that section to the right, but this time it's already incorporated and we're gonna shave off the rest of the top. We just cut away all of that stuff. So if we look at the last version, what I did was I did the main body and then I added that section on top. Whereas this time around, I incorporated the entire height and then shaved off the rest of it from the top. So the reason I'm depicting both here is just to show you that there's no right or wrong answer. It's however you want to build out the forms. It's whatever you happen to see, whatever is easiest for you. When I do this, I try to just make my life as easy as possible and try to go about it as simply as I can. The more you do this, you'll sort of understand where you need more construction and where you can get away with not doing construction. And that way you can keep your sketch simple by not necessarily needing so many plotting lines or measurement lines. And as we get into the smaller shapes, it's just a matter of adding more shapes and subtracting more shapes. So we're doing the same thing over and over again until we have a finished sketch. Okay, so now we'll go up in complexity yet again, and we'll take a look at a train. It looks complicated, there's a lot going on, but it's actually pretty simple if we do break it down into simple shapes. It's essentially one giant cylinder that's horizontal, and then a bunch of smaller ones that are vertical sitting on top of it. This particular one has that box on the front, and then this little shape on the side is basically a cube sitting on top of a cylinder, and they're intersecting one another. And then not all of them have this, but this one has that sort of um, plow type thing on the front and that's an interesting uh, sort of a pyramid triangular shape and then a bunch of cylinders for the wheels a cube at the back where the conductor is and then obviously the cars are also cubes sitting on cylindrical wheels so if i were to break this down really simply i'd say it's just one big cylinder attached to a cube at the back for the engineer or conductor and then a few other cylinders for the smokestacks and uh, mechanisms so now as we sketch, we basically do the exact same thing. We start with our main cylinder as the main body. We sketch out the simple shapes. The train is actually pretty much all additive. There's not too much subtractive shape going on here. So I'm basically just adding everything. And some shapes call for this, where it is just mo more one than the other. But I do think that typically, and this goes for myself as well, typically I think people sort of get the hang of additive design a little bit more easily and maybe forget about subtractive, but subtracting from shapes can definitely add a lot of interest and it sort of takes your designs up a notch. So if you do find yourself sticking to additive shapes, try to challenge yourself and add more subtraction to your own designs or sketches. So obviously these are sketch studies, but if you are a concept designer, I do encourage you to try to keep design in mind as well. When you're breaking down these shapes, the idea is that you're committing these to memory for your own designs. It doesn't even have to be the subject matter that we're looking at today, but the idea is as you start studying these different shapes and adding forms and subtracting, you'll better understand the relationships between all of these shapes, and that will go into your visual library, which you can pull on later when you're doing your own designs. Now these designs are more hard surface based. I don't really get into organics in this particular video, but the idea is still the same. I would say that organic shapes tend to get slightly more amorphic, kind of, you know, blobby at times, but you can still break things down into these simple shapes. You know, tree trunks are most definitely cylinders, as are the branches. And then things like plant leaves are planes, which are basically just flattened cubes. And a lot of the times they have curvature to them. So you can also think of them as sort of a section of a cylinder. So I would say you can even think of the same object as different simple shapes at different times if it helps you. There's no right or wrong to this stuff. It's all about how you interpret what you're seeing. Okay, I think that'll do it for today. As always, if you have any questions or ideas for future content, let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and thank you to Tyler Edlin for having me on the channel. If you really want to level up your game, I also co-run the group mentorship with Tyler Edlin over on his Patreon. So check that out, the link will be in the description below. We'd love to have you along, so come join us. Thanks so much, and have a good day.